Hello everybody, welcome to Scotty's Side. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, we got one here from Denmo. Men age 25 to 35 are having an existential crisis right now. Oh boy. Okay, well, we'll get into it. Let me get it all centered here. There we go. I have not watched this, so... Let's check it out. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Turn so up a little bit. Today, we're going to be doing a raw one. And I'm going to talk about the fact that the majority of the people that you know are going through an existential crisis, especially as a guy. Like, it's such a dude thing to, like, bottle up your emotions inside and then just put them into working out or doing work or sure. pursuing a hobby or something like that. Yeah. Whereas girls, anytime they feel some kind of pain or uncertainty, anxiety, they have like a million people to talk to. Like girls literally will have group chats and Snapchat each other every single day. Guys, we'll go like months at a time, sometimes years without talking to other friends of ours. And then as soon as we run into them, like, oh, what's up, dude? How, how have you been? Oh, I'm good. Everybody says they're good, right? But let's be honest. We're not doing so good, right? I'm talking about those of you that are like 25 to 35. You're a little bit over your mid 20s and you're starting to kind of like get confused about the trajectory of your life. You're not really sure what you're going through or how to navigate it because how do you how do you drive something if you don't know what you're driving, right? Yeah, I'm going to interrupt real quick. It's you know, girls talk and talk and talk and talk and that's how they work their problems out guys do it differently we can talk and it's it's good to have a group of friends like that and everything like that but we we just we process problems differently you know we don't like to sit there and talk and blabber on for an hour or two with our friends that's just not really our thing we like to work through a problem use our hands that's why he, he mentioned the gym or working on a hobby that's how we process it that's how we deal with it and work it out so i don't know if he's really saying that was a that it's a problem i don't think it is it's just how we do it it's how we cope with the situation so i'm going to kind of unpack that over the course of this video but when you're going through something maybe it's like you're not sure what you want to do with your job or you got some relationship issues you never want to actually ask for help you never want to tell anybody until the last possible minute when you absolutely have to. So I just started hitting up old friends of mine that I haven't talked to in a while. I called them, hey, let's hang out, let's grab some drinks, let's go to the movies, whatever it is, right? I did this with like five or six different friends and each one of the friends I spoke to, instead of like accepting the typical, like, hey, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. I was like, nah, man, tell me what's actually going on. Because you're gonna have a lot of people in your life that'll say, hey, what's up, dude? Everything cool? Yeah, everything's fine. And then they just leave it there. They leave it at surface level. Yeah. I think that we do that as men because we respect like that you don't want to talk about it, you know? And there's so many guys that you know, girls too, that deep down, they're not happy. They got some issues going on. They're having an ex existential crisis, but they don't want to talk about it because it's like, hey, I don't want to talk about myself. I don't want to complain or whatever, right? I remember talking to my one friend and uh, he's in real estate. Things have been very slow lately. And I he's bet. in a bad situation. He's at this firm and they're putting all this pressure on him to sell more houses. But the way that they like get more business is doing pretty shady stuff. Like oh. big high interest loans. It's like, you know, those companies where like, hey, if the bank won't give you money, we will mm. just like high pressure selling. I could tell that it was weighing on him because he also lives at home with his parents. He's trying so hard. He's cold calling. He's going door to door and he's just not getting the sales he needs and because of that he feels like a loser and he feels like he's just not doing good enough right mm. and when you feel that way it affects your confidence everywhere else in life so sure you know his dating life isn't going so well then i talked to another friend he runs his own business this year things have been very slow which is a common theme here in canada uh business is oh slow, canada are high Ugh. the government's just on a whole new fucking level yeah and it, it, it's just crazy right now People aren't paying for, uh, you know, the services he offers anymore. So his employees are like taking jobs at other places and 
he just feels like such a lack of control because like this business he started doing construction, it was only supposed to be a temporary thing. He started a couple years ago because he needed money. But like each year he's like, okay, then I'll do something else. But he's just been stuck in this trade, right? Socialism and at work. You can just see that every day he's showing up and working 12 hours, but he doesn't want to. He got hit with a massive tax bill this year, which is, Ooh. you know, one of the things about Canada. When you own a business, you have to pay a lot of taxes and the government makes it hard to make any kind of money at all. You know, Fuck that. like every incentive to do good in society, the government's like, no, 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 no. Here's another tax. Okay. He can create his art. And that's something I empathize a lot with because that because that used to be me. Like when I was like 19 years old, I wanted to be a musician, but sure. I knew I couldn't make a living doing it. So I went into the trades. Right. But good. Just hanging out with him. You know, he's like bunkered down, living like a recluse, like making this money online, like coding 14 hours a day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. One day I'll be able to escape. And he's just under so much pressure, so much demand to just make this money and pay his bills and manage everything. But like deep down, he is trapped. And it's weird because it's like most guys, especially during this age, 25 to 35, we're just like, we're on a fucking hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And we're just running and running and running with no direction. So was you know, I. Where are we going? What are we actually working towards? Yep. And that's not necessarily like how I think life was going to go. Because when you're in your early 20s, you know, you're so optimistic, you're so happy. Oh, man, I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to do this. And then it's like, OK, but you need to get a job. In order to get a good job out of college, you need to have like a minimum couple of years experience. Right. So, you know, as soon as you graduate, you have to spend two or three years being an errand boy or like, you know, just the guy that's willing to do everything and bottom of the company, just work his way up, which is good. That's normal. That's what hard work is. OK, yeah. but then you get that job. Now you have some financial security. You got like a certain salary you're making, a certain wage, whatever it is. And then you have to do that. You're locked in for 40 hours a week. And maybe you get two weeks off per year vacation, maybe three weeks. Damn. Right? Imagine that. You work essentially 96, 95% of the year. And then on top of that, if you make over. 90 to a hundred thousand dollars you're paying at least about 50 60 percent in taxes jeez you know, especially if you run your own business so <sighs> you're essentially working half of the year for free in order yeah. to get yeah two <clears throat> so if you live in canada and you're paying that much like why would you want to own your own business i don't understand that uh, there's no way if i was getting that much taken out that i would be like yeah i'm gonna start a business that's dumb, dude. Like, I, at least in my opinion, there's no way I would do that. I mean, is that the same here in the states? I don't know. I don't. I don't own a company, so I mean, if that's how it's going, like, oh boy, Two weeks of vacation. Fuck dude. that. And I've been an entrepreneur for the last couple of years, so I have my own set of problems, you know. And for those of you that are business owners, you know what it's like. You're basically starting something from scratch, but in the long term, that's how you become successful, right? And one of the things I do is I help guys quit their jobs, their software jobs, et cetera, and start YouTube channels talking to the camera like this. And I have a program, it's hey. called Two Hour Tuber. And it's basically how you can upload a couple of videos a week, make enough money just in AdSense <clears throat> revenue and selling your own products more than you would working a job for somebody else. And you just get to talk about what you want. So if you're interested in working with us, you can join Two Hour Tuber. Links in the It's just something that most of us don't feel is possible. And I have so many friends that are now kind of stuck in this trap, this existential crisis where they're like, OK, I'm around the age where my parents had kids and they had a house and they had a lovely girl. And, you know, on weekends you drink with. Yeah, well, there's a lot to unpack there. Girls aren't the way they used to be, for one. Prices aren't what they used to be. Inflation is not what it used to be. Uh, government overreach is not what it used to be. Uh, this global market thing is not the way it used to be. There's a lot of different factors that the world is a lot, lot different than it used to be. So that's why it's not Friends, there, man. You play sports and life's yeah. good, right? But now it's just like there's this uh, there's this bubble that everybody seems to be stuck in, you know, because. Yeah. 
most of my friends, they have so much potential. They have so many things that they'd be really good at, but Ooh. they're just scared, scared to take Excuse a me. chance. And I don't know if it was like Schmovid a couple years ago. <laughs> Schmovid. <laughs> it really shook everybody up. But like just the financial uncertainty, the lack of trust in the government, the uh. lack of trust in anything anymore. Yeah. Like you can't believe what you hear in the news. You can't believe what you see on social media. Every job is potentially being replaced in a couple of years by AI and you can't trust yeah. your employers that say that they love you forever, but they'll quickly fire you and replace you with somebody that'll work for less than you do mm -hmm. overseas, especially. There's yeah. so many reasons for guys to just not believe anything anymore. And meanwhile, you're stuck in a gig that you don't enjoy. You're working long hours. It's a lot more difficult than ever before to date and make new friends. And it's not even because like, look, in a lot of my videos, I help guys with social skills, and I have a program called Socializer School. It's where I help guys build social circles, approach and attract girls in real life and stuff. I usually work with guys that are making a good amount of money in their 30s, you know, software engineers, that kind of thing, but they're struggling with dating, right? So they pay me and one of my coaches in my group, or they just get the program as it is, and they go through, they get a girlfriend and stuff. You know, a big issue is approach anxiety and guys that don't want to do that. But I think that the main issue is a mental health issue. It's not a dating issue. It's a mental health issue. Because I'll agree with him there. So many guys would love to date, but they're just like, I'm not ready yet because, you know, oh, I, got this, I got this job I'm working on. I need to put in more hours so I can get a promotion. I need to get the quarterly bonus, right? I well, I think another problem is there. It's, I don't think it's so much approach anxiety. I think it's more guys don't want to take the risk. It's the juice is not worth the squeeze, so to speak. There's a lot of problems that can go on if a girl doesn't like your approach. You didn't say the right thing. You're a creep. This and that. A girl can make false claims against you. All sorts of stuff. And I think men are wising up and walking away from it and just being like, I'm not even dealing with it. You know, there's there's guys that will still date and maybe mess around. But then there's there's the monk guys and... You know, I can't blame them. And I think the that mindset, that philosophy is growing. And uh, maybe it should. Maybe it should. So you need to be going to the gym constantly. I don't think I agree you know, with it that much Because here. there's all these protocols I got to follow. I got to wake up 6 a.m. and I got to see the sunlight, you know. And <laughs> every hour of every day, guys are just focused on like 10 years from now. And this is where champions are set aside from like average people, I suppose. But it's like this hectic stress that we put into our lives because we have the weight of the world on our shoulders is actually what's isolating us and pushing us away from everybody. And that's the craziest thing because like right now we should be enjoying this time. This is potentially the most fun of your life. A friend of mine, he, uh, he spent years commuting and he was working a personal training job and a security job and he was just doing them back to back for like 16 hours a day. Cool. And he couldn't afford to live in the city, so he had to take the subway out of the city every single night. This was in New York. And, Damn, gross. you know, he was telling me he had to drink, like, three extra-large coffees a day just so he didn't fall asleep. And now he's successful. But he looks back on those times, and he's like, man, those were the best times because I was just grinding, right? But the biggest issue I notice with guys is we're grinding, we're grinding, we're grinding. We still have all these emotions, though. We still have these pains. Yeah. We can work out all we want. We can make as much money as we want. We can go out and bang as many girls as we want, but the pain is still there. We're all running away from the same thing. And in my opinion, as much as you think that you need to wait to reach out to friends, you need to do something big or successful first so that you have something to talk about with them, there is no perfect time. You just gotta reach out to them. You just gotta spend time with them. You just gotta hang out with them. Because as guys, we are all going through the same existential crisis. But we all feel like, you know, there's an elephant in the room, but let's just not address it. You know, let's just ignore it. Let's just pretend like that's not even there and everything is A-OK. -okay. But it's like, why? Everybody else is feeling the same way. And that's why my videos resonate with so many people, you know? I did a video a couple months ago. Everybody around you is faking it. And everyone's like, damn, <laughs> this hit the fucking nail on the head. Especially if you're from Ontario or Canada. So... My tip for you is to just reach out to some of your close friends and be like, hey, man, how's it going? And they're going to be like, oh, I'm okay. And be like, dude, how are you really doing, though? You know? Like, 
Are you enjoying your job? Are you enjoying your relationship? What's your plan? Do you want to be doing this right now? I can help you, you know? Like I have a lot of friends that I've helped switch careers. I got a bunch of my friends in the online sales. I got a couple friends that are gonna start working in socializer school as coaches because they're- That's cool. You know, I mean, that's that's great that he's um, helping guys out. It, it really is. And um, I believe that us guys do need uh, a good group of friends and um, they're out there, you know, especially the guys here now that are watching my channel. You can always reach out to me. I've got an email. Um, it's in my little about section or whatever uh, on my channel. There's tons of other guys that comment in my videos and you can talk to them. They have there's a huge like group of guys that are going their own way that kind of think outside the box. And I hope everyone watching this can find a group of guys like that because it's very important to talk about this because no one really listens to us. That's And that's why it's tough and can suck sometimes because uh, when you really break it down, a lot of people don't care about men and their issues. So having a group of guys to talk to, I think is very important, like he says. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys have that. And if you need someone, you can always reach out to me. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. I uh, hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.